Good evening, beloveds. I want to welcome you to what I hope will be the first of many, many spiritual spas. Time for us to relax and recharge and renew ourselves as we discuss those experiences that can disquiet our spirit. So just like any other spa, the first thing you want to do is get undressed. <laughs> I don't mean you have to take your clothes off, but we do want to come fully present to this right now moment. So I'm going to ask you to hold your comments for a moment, hold your question in the chat line, and let's just take a moment to get present, to come in, to get grounded. So since you can hear me, all you need to do is just allow your eyelids to close. Just allow your eyelids to close. Hold the chats, close your eyelids. Just allow your shoulders to relax and allow yourself to become aware of your breathing, your inhale and your exhale. Just connect with your breath, just as if you were lying on a warm massage table, just relax. As you inhale and exhale. Yeah, relax. Again, allow your eyelids to just come together. You'll still be able to hear me. Now, here's the interesting thing about the body. And that is that it will obey your mind. So if you instruct your body to relax, it will relax. So let's start here. Allowing your eyelids to remain together. Relax your shoulders. Relax your hips. Relax your legs. And if you're sitting hunched over the keyboard, just sit back for a moment and just relax. Remember, we're at the spa. Consider this a spa treatment for relaxation and become mindful of your inhale and your exhale. Breathing deeply, just allow yourself to relax. If your eyelids are fluttering, tell them to relax. Breathing slowly, just tell your eyelids to relax. Just as if you were at the spa. Let the day fall away. If your mind is racing, just tell it to relax. Mm. As you inhale and exhale. Now just listen for a moment. Now allow your mind to become aware of my voice, the sound of my voice and take a long deep inhale and drop it. <laughs> we have the spa, so you gotta relax. So once again, welcome. This is an interactive platform. So please feel free to put your comments in the uh, sidebar. And if you have a question, there's a box at the bottom. It says, ask a question. You can put your question in there and um, you can put your question in there and I'll see it. I wanna answer as many as possible. Now I won't get to everybody tonight, but that's okay. We're gonna have many spas. Let me say hi to a few people. Wait a minute, I wanna say hi to all the way from Belize. Hi, how you doing out there in South Florida? How are you? Chicago, how are you? Delaware, Philly, Brooklyn. I wanna say hi to everybody. I wanna say hi to my team and thank them for helping me bring this together to be with you this evening. Um, I see there's a lot of you, Sacramento, Fort Lauderdale. Hey, I'm coming to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> if you're having technical difficulties, I see you've got to refresh your browser and this platform works best in Chrome. So if you're in Safari or somewhere else, um, 
you you want to go to Google Chrome. Hi, Missy Amla. Hi from Florida. Hi from Jacksonville. Hi, New Jersey. Hack and sack. How are you doing? Uh, hi, England. So I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Tonight, I want to share with you uh, a few thoughts about faith, specifically as it relates to having a relationship with yourself. Let me get some information here for you. Um, let's begin by talking about the reason that we've gathered here tonight. Wait a minute, my little thing is being a little crazy. The reason we're gathered here tonight, and that's because um, I created this concept of spiritual spa. Actually, one of my team members, Cheryl Woodruff, created it based on my book, Acts of Faith, which is now 25 years old. Acts of Faith is 25 years old. And it's the wisdom that's contained in that book, within the pages of that book, that's taking me out on the road to do a 30 city tour, because I wanna bring the wisdom of that book from the page to the stage in the 21st century. When I think that I wrote Acts of Faith in the 20th century, that sounds so crazy, but I did. And so I want to share with you some wisdom and I want to do it up close and in your face. So I'm going to start right there. This is my old copy of Acts of Faith, the little purple book. I have it in the cover so people won't know what it is. And this is what she looks like now because she's older. <laughs> so she's grown up. Uh, this is what she looks like now. I hope you have your copy. But I want to start today by actually reading the message for tomorrow. Acts of Faith, March 15th. Let me get my visual assistance, because you all know I don't wear glasses. I have visual assistance that help me when I need it. Okay, let me see if I can get them on. Okay, March 15th, Acts of Faith says, truth is much more than a mental exercise. That's a quote by Thurgood Marshall. The human mind is always searching for truth. The mind guides us through books, it interprets our experiences. It limits us based on our exposure. The mind searches for truth, not realizing that the truth was never lost. Unfortunately, truth cannot reveal itself in a mind that is busy with chatter. That chatter refers to what you think you need or want and what you say. Unlike truth, your mental chatter may have nothing to do with what is real. The only way to find truth is to go deep within yourself and live from that consciousness and understanding. The truth is the reality of who you are from the inside out. And that is something we rarely think about. Truth is the joy of living, of being, of having connection to everyone and everything without thought or malice or condemnation of any part of you. Truth is the spirit of life. I live in the light of truth. Oh, let's take a breath on that. Yeah, from the page to the stage. Acts of faith has so much wisdom. And the truth is that, I'm sorry to keep reaching over you. I'm trying to get myself organized. The truth is that many of us have lost faith in ourselves and in our ability to manifest what it is that we desire. The truth is that many of us have lost faith in the world and how it operates around us and for us. And another truth, a really big truth is, many of us have lost faith in our families and our loved ones, We've lost faith in our ability to have or sustain loving, healthy, fulfilling relationships, intimate connections with one another. We've, we've just lost faith in relationships. And some of us, not all of us, some of us have even lost faith in God, in the creator, and in the divine process of life. And these are truths that many of us live with each and every day. Although we walk around acting, you know, with our hair done and the nails and in our suit and tie, and we get up and go to work, whether we're struggling with a health challenge or a financial challenge, as we watch or avoid the news, <laughs> as we uh, struggle with addictions or just bad behavior, we, we struggle and we lose faith. And as a result, how we treat ourselves and how we treat each other is really, really changing. Because some of us 
have lost faith in our own humanity and we've lost faith in humanity. Why? Well, I think it's because many of us look outside of ourselves for the things that we really want, the stuff that we already have within ourselves. But because we can't find it out there, then we lose faith thinking that we can never have it or that it's not for us. Or we lose our faith in our capacity to be it, to do it, to have it, whatever it is. And when we face disappointment after disappointment or hurt after hurt or challenge after challenge, the challenges of everyday life, when we face those over and over again, we begin to take it personally. <laughs> we think that life is harsh and brutal and that the things we go through are totally unnecessary. And yes, we lose faith. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hit a wall, the first thing that leaves me is my faith. <laughs> I have faced some stuff in life, and the first thing to abandon me was my faith. I've hit some bumps in the road that have caused me to be afraid or ashamed or angry and even sometimes hopeless. But until I stopped and got real clear about what faith was and how I had abandoned it, because faith didn't abandon me. I abandoned it. I abandoned it at the first sign of trouble. Until I stopped and got clear about how I abandoned faith and what faith is. So many of us have a distorted image of view perspective of what faith is. You know, we hear faith and the first thing we think is religion. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the belief and trust in who we are and who others are in the world and in our ability to create um, the finances that we want. So the first thing I want you to get, you can take notes if you want to, faith is an inner knowing about unseen things that dares your soul to go where your eyes can't see. <laughs> your eyes may not be able to see it, but faith will guide you to follow your own inner voice, not outside excitement or stimulation, your inner voice, to go where your eyes have no ability to, to see what's going on. My grandmother used to say, don't believe your lying eyes, just keep moving in faith. <laughs> I thought she was crazy, but then I learned. Faith is not just what we believe in or believe for. Faith is what we live when we know the truth of who we are. When we really I know who we are, when we sit firmly in that identity, I'm not talking about your name. I'm talking about what you stand for, what you're made of. When we really understand that, the truth of who we are, we have faith and confidence in who we are. Now, oh, let me do this. Here is a perfect question that, that, was, that addresses that issue. It's from Sherry Hansen. Sherry is answer, asking, where do you begin when you feel so lost in yourself? Thank you for that question, Sherry. It, it's one that I believe many of us have or had or grapple with on any given day. I feel lost. I'm not moving. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do or how to do it. So faith in yourself, Sherry, be, begins with an intimate relationship with yourself, I'm talking intimate, because once you lose touch with you, with the truth of who you are, with the essence of who you are, you will lose faith in yourself. You really will. And what I know from experience is that many of us never really established a relationship with ourselves because we were talked out of it or beat out of it or frightened out of it. We were never taught how to establish a loving, supportive, healthy, intimate relationship with ourselves. But instead, we were taught that what other people want for us, want from us, believe about us, we were taught that that was more important than what we want for ourselves. We were taught that we had to please others to keep ourselves safe. And when you work against yourself, even for those instances when you have to, you will lose faith. We were ne never taught or few of us were taught that what we want, what we think, what we feel is important. So 
to you, Sherry, and to all the Sherry's folks out there, everybody that I can identify with Sherry's question. If you feel lost or if you have lost faith in yourself, you must begin with a self-examination. Now, I know that is probably the last thing most of us want to do. And it can be really, really scary. But just like Thurgood Marshall said in Acts of Faith today, you must get clear about who you are, about what you want, and most of all, about what you do that keeps you from getting what it is you say you want. The You've got to get clear about the stories that you've been told about yourself and the ones you're telling yourself about who you are and who you're not and what you can do and what you can't do. So how do you get clear? Okay. How do you engage in a self-reflection that will allow you to understand the truth of who you are so that you can build faith and confidence in yourself? Well, this is what you do. Get you a journal. (laughs) <laughs> okay, get yourself a journal and start writing. Now, if you would every day for 21 days, write your response to one question, one question, you're going to see yourself in a brand new light. And you got to write it. You can't type it. Why? Because you want it to come out of your brain, come down through your heart, lose through your fingers and end up on the paper. You want to know what the question is? Who am I? <laughs> Not what have I done? What do I have? Who am I? And you just allow the thoughts to flow. This is one of the most profound questions you can ever ask yourself. Who am I? And you do that every day for 21 days, Sherry. Sherry and everybody else. If you want to build faith, ask the question, who am I? Then at the end of that 21 days, you start with a new question. What do I want? A good, loving relationship with yourself starts with knowing the truth of who you are and what you want. When you don't understand, recognize, embrace who you are, when you don't tell the truth about what it is you really want, you will lose faith in yourself and you won't recognize the lessons that your life is bringing you, which means you won't be able to take the appropriate steps in your life that will get you what you truly desire. So how do you jumpstart yourself to get faith and confidence? Answer those two questions. Who am I and what do I want? In your journal, go right out to Target, Target, go to Target and get you a journal. That's where I got this one. I got it out the basket. It was cheap, okay? I put it up there with all the 862 other journals that I have and start with answering these questions. Who am I? What do I want? In fact, At the end of this broadcast, tomorrow morning, I'm going to send you an email that's going to have a bonus worksheet. It's going to have a worksheet that is going to help you get those questions answered so that you can get clear about you and build a better relationship with you. It's going to open the path for self-examination. But I'll tell you about that uh, a little more later on. If you want the bonus worksheet, just stay tuned and you'll get the link so that you can get it. Now, here's another question. Why do we lose faith in ourselves? Why do we lose faith in ourselves? I, I want to approach this from a different way. Let me just uh, stop my notes for a moment. Because the truth is, we are faithful. Oh, we're absolutely faithful. We have faith that the everything that we don't want will happen. We have faith that if we find a new boo, he going to leave or she going to leave. We have faith that the people who've always acted crazy will continue to act crazy. (laughs) We have faith that because we want it, we can't have it. We have faith. Oh, we're very faithful. The thing is that we put our faith in the wrong thing. Let me tell you why that's important. Now, I'm a a scripture baby, okay? I'm not going to beat you over the head with the Bible, but I do want to make this very point to you. Scriptures say, trust in the Lord. Trust in God. Trust in the creator. Trust in. So trust is an inward experience. It's got to be in you. Scriptures then say faith without works is no thing. Faith without works is no thing. So here's the conundrum in which we find ourselves. When we don't have trust within, it'll be hard to act on faith without. Okay, trust is internal, faith is external, but they work hand in hand. And if you've got a problem in one, trust me, boo, you're going to have a problem in the other. 
So we have faith that the things that we don't want will happen, but we don't trust the process ourselves, God, life enough to know that we can put our faith in the things that we do want to happen. Okay, so just make a note of that. Take your finger, take your finger and do this. F7, enter. Um, Danielle, let me address that issue. Danielle says, I had a horrible experience with journaling. Is there another tool I can use? This is a classic example of her putting her faith that something bad happened before it's going to happen again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that, that, um, that, that is going to happen again. No, Danielle. I don't know what your experience was, but if you are alone in a room with you and a notebook and a pen and you had a bad experience, it's you, boo. It's you. So let's go back in. Let's go back in and ask, what was that experience? What was that? And then just write down what it was. Don't put your faith in the fact that because you it happened before, it's going to happen again. Exactly what I was saying. Thank you, Danielle, for that question. You made my point. Now, if you don't want to, you know what? I'm not going to accommodate you limiting yourself. Figure it out. I'm telling you, this is the tool. Journaling is the tool. Go in there and find out what happened, okay? And if you don't want to journal alone, create a journaling group. What would happen if three or four or five or six of y'all came together on a Thursday night and sat around the table with your favorite drink and some chips and just wrote in the journal, who am I? And then shared your re-answers. Shared, shared your re-answers. Oh, my Lord. Shared your answers. Wait a minute. Terry's got a good question. <laughs> Terry said, I'm 50. I'm too old for this. Terry, go to the mirror and slap the first person that comes up. <laughs> As long as you are breathing, my love, so you put your faith in the fact that you're too old and you can't do this. You can't go to Tarjay and dig in the basket and get a lovely little journal and sit down and ask yourself the question. So let me tell you what will happen if you don't do it. If you don't begin to develop that relationship, that confidence, that faith in yourself, what's going to happen is you're going to keep experiencing exactly what you've been experiencing. And then you get to sit around and complain. You get to whine. You get to feel bad. Or you just stay where you are unhappy, if you're unhappy. And if you're not unhappy, oh, well. <laughs> Never too old. As long as you're breathing, it's a chance. It's an opportunity. And there's a bigger possibility than the one you have now. So let me talk for a, a moment about why we lose faith in ourselves. Let me get my notes back, okay? I, I, my experience, this is my experience. You take what you need and you can let the rest go. We lose faith in ourselves because of the things people tell us. As a child, the people who raised me frequently told me that I was bad, that I was wrong, or that I was doing it wrong. And here's the big thing. They always tell me that I talk too much. <laughs> now I get paid very well to run my mouth, but we won't have that conversation, okay? Now, I know they weren't trying to destroy my faith in myself or my confidence or my value, but what I heard and lived with diminished my sense of self. And when your self is diminished, your self-esteem, your self-value, your self-worth, and your sense of self in a good, healthy, positive way, it's going to be hard to know who you are and to build a healthy relationship with yourself. And if you don't have a good relationship with you, you are not going to put your faith in you as long as you think you're bad or wrong or, or stupid or whatever it is that you may have heard. So the first thing that destroys our faith in ourselves and hinders our relationship with ourselves is the things that we were told or heard or saw as children. And because we can't unsee them, unhear them, it just stays with us. So a good relationship with yourself that allows you to have faith in yourself will grow from you understanding that your thoughts about yourself and your capabilities cannot come from the outside. They got to come from the inside. You cannot govern your life based on what people said you could do, couldn't do, might do, may not do. And there's been documented research that, that may lead you to believe that society or the church or your parents know more about you than you. That is absolutely not accurate. 
So that's the first thing. But here's what I want you to say. Take a breath with me. <sighs> Hear me. The mountains that you face, the problems that have challenged you, the issues that you are working through or have worked through, all of those were assigned to you. They were assigned to you so that you can become a demonstration to other people of what is possible and what is doable. Those are your assignments. So don't lose faith because they're there. Have confidence that you can get through them. Faith in yourself. It's not about everything turning out okay or looking the way you want it to look. Faith in yourself is about you being okay, no matter how something turns out or no matter what you're going through. And when you have a song in your heart, a song of faith in your heart, it shows up on your face, okay? And when you lack faith in yourself, people will see it in everything you do. So that is the key. Don't worry about me saying it again. You're going to get the replay link and you're going to download your worksheet and you're going to have all of this. Just take it in, okay? Let me ask her another question. Let me get this question here. Yasu is asking, Yasu, hi Yasu. How do you even attempt to build a relationship with your mother mm, who has a negative viewpoint on life when you're trying to keep yourself on track towards the positive? Thank you for that question, Yasu. Now, I'm going to save that one for next week, for next week's spiritual spa, because next week we're going to be discussing relationships with others, okay? And mother is an other, <laughs> all right? This week we are focusing on your relationship with yourself. And I'm telling you, Yasu, as you begin to get clear and tell the truth about who you are and what you want, your relationship with everybody, life, the bees, the trees, everybody, it's going to change, okay? So I'm going to hold your question for next week. Yasu, be sure to sign up and join in last week. Let me see, next week, Val Valentin is asking, how do you keep faith in God when you know one day your loved ones will die and you'll miss them? Okay, Valentine, thank you for asking that question, but let me answer the first part first, the second part first, okay? Valentine, people simply cannot and do not live forever. They just don't. Death or transition, whatever you call it, call it it's an inevitable part of life. And the way you prepare yourself for the loss of the loved one is to love them now. Love them hard, love them good. Tell them that you love them. Show them that you love them. Have faith that even after they're gone, their love is going to stay inside of you. That love is never going to die because it's within you, okay? Don't put your faith that you're going to be miserable and horrible because somebody dies. I've buried my father, my brother, my mother, my sister, my stepmother, and a child. And baby, mm -hmm, I've got friends in high places. <laughs> now, let me answer the first part of your question. What should we do when everything goes well in our life, but it feels like we're going around in circles? Well, it sounds to me that you may have lost your ability in your uh, uh, potential to go higher, okay? Why would you go around in circles when you can go up? <laughs> What that sounds like, Valentin, is that you may be lacking a vision. More often than not, when there's a lack of vision, when there's a lack of clarity about what it is that you want, you stay in the same place. Now, you may be content. You may be content. You may even be happy. But if you experience it as going around in circles, then it says you got to expand your vision. Valentin, I want you to stay tuned because I really want you to get the, the bonus um, worksheet. And I also hope that you're coming to see me when I come to a city, your city or a city near you, because I'm going to take this to a whole nother level when we get there. This is just to prepare us. This is the pre-work. I want to thank you. Let me say hi to a few more people. Let me say hi to, uh, oh, I don't see nobody. I know you all are there. I just can't see your names. <laughs> okay. But you're there. Now, let me just say this before we go on. If you want to know if I'm coming to your city, or a city near you, road trip, <laughs> okay, go to iyamlavanzantlive.com. That page will give you the full schedule of the tour, and you can also purchase your tickets there. And please, if you can help it, 
don't come alone, okay? Because you're going to need somebody to talk to on the way home. So bring a friend, bring a girlfriend, bring your partner, bring somebody, bring your mama, okay? It's a great Mother's Day gift. We gave you a two-for-one ticket uh, sale for Mother's Day. So don't come alone, okay? <sighs> Next spa treatment. Mm -hmm. I hope you're starting to feel good, all right? Why else do we lose faith in ourselves? Hear me, okay? Clutch your pearls. Mm -hmm. Bad habits and bad behavior. <laughs> now, when I say bad, I don't mean wrong. I don't mean wrong at all. I mean doing things that occupy our time, our energy, and our resources that are not in alignment with or supportive of what it is we say that we want. That's bad behavior. All right. You've been messing around with that thing for the past 52 years. Leave it alone. You've been messing around with that person for the last 52 years. Leave it alone. OK, bad behavior. And we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we think we can't get out of it. And then we lose faith. Or another reason we lose faith in ourselves is when we think things that are unkind or unloving about ourselves and about other people. Or when we allow people to do things to us that are unloving and unsupportive. When we act from comfort and familiarity rather than a clear intention and desire, more often than not, not that's a bad habit, lazy habit. And that keeps us frozen. We're frozen, stuck in the ice of our life, and we got 10 packs of matches in our pocket. <laughs> Let me tell you about what Acts of Faith March 10th says, all right? Acts of Faith, I'm going to read from the new book. I'm going to read from the new book because I want you to go get you one because it's pretty. <laughs> and if you're a VIP uh, person at the Acts of Faith Remix Tour, you're going to get uh, this book and it's going to have a surprise in it for you, all right? Acts of Faith. We're talking about bad habits and we're talking about bad behavior. Acts of Faith, March 10th. Instead of wallowing in my misery... I just made some changes. Do you know who said that? Stephanie Mills. <laughs> you know, Dorothy from The Wiz. Okay, Stephanie Mills. Okay, my glasses are not sitting on my face. Here you go. Listen, listen to this. You can do something the same way for so long that you begin to do it without thinking. When you are not thinking about what you are doing, you may not recognize its harmful effects, bad behavior and bad habits. Very often, the habit of doing a certain thing in a certain way robs you of new experiences. This is for you, Sherry, and all the Sherry people out there. In order to learn and grow and be happy, you must always seek the new. Speak to someone before they speak to you, or let them speak first if you're always the one speaking. Try the radio instead of the television. Bathe in the morning instead of at night. Be conscious of what you do and how you do it and be open to happy new experiences. Today, I am willing to do it different. And the new acts of faith has a reflection. And here's the reflection. Choose to be conscious and to do something different today and then journal about how that made you feel. Yeah, you have to be willing to do something new. You have to be willing to persist until you succeed. So many of us um, give up. Here's a bad habit I see all the time. I see so many people who do this, is that we overcommit and underperform, okay? Overcommit and underperform. We take on more than we can humanly do and do more than is required or productive. One sure way to lose faith in yourself is to overdo or fail to complete what you start. So I want to offer you, do one thing at a time and do it well. One of the principles that I live by is excellence. When I'm momming, I'm excellent. When I'm loving, I'm excellent. When I'm working, when I'm making masterpiece products, when I'm writing, when I'm here with you, I'm, I'm, this is all I'm doing. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it well and I'm going to do it to the end. If you want to build your faith in yourself, do everything for the joy of doing it. One reason we lose faith in ourselves is because we do stuff because we're obligated to do it and we don't really want to do it, but we force ourselves to do it. Then we get mad at the other people and at ourselves. So be realistic about what you do and what you want to do, what you need to do and can do and do everything to completion. Okay. So that you know that you can trust yourself to do what you say you're going to do.
Okay. I'm going to take some more questions. Laura is here helping me. Laura, wait a minute. I've got a question here. This question is from Felicia. Let me take this. Felicia. Hi, Felicia. She says, how do I reinvent, start over, or live my dream at the age of 60 years old when I'm not sure if I'm equipped to pursue my passion, but I know for certain what I'm currently doing is not what I've always longed to do. Okay. So I'm not going to say bye, Felicia. <laughs> I am not going to say that. I'm going to say thank you, Felicia, because you've raised one of the primary reasons that people lose faith in ourselves. When you don't know, hear me, when you don't know that you are enough to sustain you, to fulfill your own dreams, or that you have the capacity to create what it is you desire, when you don't know that, you will lose faith in yourself. Remember, remember this. Faith it what drags your soul to be, to do, to have what your eyes cannot see. Faith is what we live when we know the truth of who we are. Felicia, get you a journal and start getting clear about who you are and what you desire. Go within. Just because you're 60, you, you, you know what? You're moving into the wise woman stage. You're becoming an elder. Just because you're 60 doesn't mean that you can't get clear about the truth of who you are. In fact, it means there's probably a new truth about you at 60 that you didn't need to know at 50. You want to get into your soul and understand what is possible for you. Miss Felicia, you've probably lost faith in yourself and faith in the world around you. So please get a journal. I, I sure hope you're coming to see me. I hope you're coming to see me. I hope I'm coming to a city near you because I'm going to talk about different things as it relates to faith uh, on the tour, you know? So if you need a ticket, Miss Felicia, go to iyamavanzantlive.com and see if I'm coming to a city near you, okay? Uh-huh, all right. Let me get some more questions here. I want to say hi. Uh, Felicia said it. Yvetta says, speak, Felicia, I'm 70. It don't matter. You a wise woman. Oh, Yeah. You can, you can get some good stuff right now. All right. So, um, Sherry Giles, Sherry Giles. Hi, Sherry. Thank you for your question. Sherry Giles is saying, how do I find the root issue behind my self-sabotaging ways? Okay. That's a good question. People always talk to me about self-sabotage and it's one or two things. It's fear. <laughs> okay. It's either fear or bad habits bad habits. And listen, the only thing that can break a habit is a new habit. So you have to create better habits and become a slave to them. All right. I don't talk about enslavement often, but the only thing that I'm enslaved to is good habits. So if you want to stop sabotaging yourself, get your journal and you've got to, you got to be ruthless. You got to do a Columbo. Okay. <laughs> You got to do a Columbo on yourself. You got to put on your trench coat and you got to get you, a, a, you don't have to get no cigar, but put on your trench coat and start looking at how you do things. Can I tell you something? Shh, don't tell, don't tell anybody, okay? Let me tell you about a pattern that I know in my life, all right? I wouldn't tell this to many people, but since there's, I, I'll just tell you all, but don't tell nobody, all right? Once I did my work, my journaling for days upon days upon days upon days and really started getting clear, that's why you all want to get the bonus worksheet. I'm going to send you a link tomorrow, but I'll tell you about that later. One of the things that I just discovered was anytime I was getting ready to do anything good or anything bad or anything big, not bad, big, anything good or anything big, my family would erupt, Okay. Somebody done cussed somebody out. Somebody done lost something. Somebody done got arrested or the house burned down or the teeth fell out or the dog got run over by the garbage truck, no matter what it was. And what that would do is that it would take me off track. So now I got to go help my brother, save my sister, fix the kids, save the grandkids, you know? And so it was through journaling that I really came to understand, wow, every time I get ready to do something big or fun, something that's going to bring me joy. My family erupts. Hmm. I said to myself, hmm, Iyama, this a pattern. You need to do something different. So I started watching it. 
And I'm telling you, whether it was my Emmy or an NAACP Image Award or taking a trip or buying a car or whatever it is, something would always happen to, to steal my joy. I started watching and I started making new choices. So I would say whatever was happening, as long as nobody was bleeding or in the hospital, if I'm doing something and your life erupts, I'm staying focused on my life. I am not on the Save Your Life Committee. Hear me? You need to resign from the Save Your Life Committee and you need to resign from the Self-Sabotage Committee. But the way you're going to do that is to start paying attention to how you sabotage. What is the feeling that comes up that makes you do something that takes you off track? What are the thoughts that permeate your mind? So you got to Columbo the thing, okay? You got to Columbo it. You got to pay attention to what you do, when you do, and start writing it down. Don't just hold it in your mind. Here's a trick. Hear, hear me. The same sick mind that you're trying to heal is the same sick mind you're looking to for answers to fix it. <laughs> that don't make no sense. That's bad behavior. Okay, so write it down so that you pull it from the inside and you get some new and you get some new insights. Let me see what's going over here. Right. I am not on the Save Your Life Committee. Okay, just tell people I'm not on that committee. Somebody called me today say, oh, I need a I said, I'm not on that committee. I'm not. All right. Here we go. Resign from. Okay, good. That y'all are just telling me what I said. Yes, Jesus. I hope he's with us. Here we go. Here's another question. Amber. Hi, Amber. Amber's a baby. Amber is 27 years old. That means when I wrote Acts of Faith, Amber was two. <laughs> Do you see why I'm going on tour? Amber, where you live? You got your ticket? You better come on out here and see me and bring your little youngins with you because I'm a wise woman. All right? Amber, as a young person on my spiritual journey, good for you, Amber. What do you feel is the most important foundational thing to focus on and develop? Amber, faith. <laughs> I want you to develop faith. I want you to develop faith in yourself, Amber. You're 27 and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fall and you're going to bruise your knees. But I don't want you to lose faith. I want you to build a healthy, intimate relationship with yourself so that when you make a mistake or when you uh, uh, make a poor decision, you won't abandon you. Remember I said earlier, the first thing I do is I abandon faith. Faith doesn't abandon me. I want you to develop that relationship. Amber, I want you to get real clear about what it is that you want. I want you to write it down in your journal. Get the bonus worksheet. Write it down in your journal. And I want you to do it every day, just as prescribed on that worksheet. I want you to get clear about that. And then I want you to take small little steps towards it each and every day, Amber. I want you to be a slave to your desires. I don't want you to let anybody talk you out of of it. I want you to have faith in it because you know the truth of who you are and you're telling the truth about what you want. And you're going to have faith, not confidence, faith, faith that's going to pull your soul to where your eyes can't see. Come on, Amber. You do this. I want you to develop faith. That's the most important thing. And the other thing, Amber, is I want you to develop a daily spiritual practice. Okay. Do you have my awakenings app? I'm not, I'm really not just trying to sell you a product. Really, I'm not. I'm trying to give you all the tools that you need. Awakenings, okay? Each day, you get three principles that you can listen to and journal about. It's me talking to you. So Amber, please go to beautyeverywhere.com and get the Awakenings app, Daily Life Coaching with Iyama Van Zandt. That's a tool. And Amber, here's what I want you to know, right? You can't write this down, but you'll get it when you get the replay thing. Be sure to get the replay thing, then go through this and take your notes. Amber, a delay is not a denial. Another reason we lose faith is because we don't have patience. And we think because the thing don't show up when we push the 30 second button in the microwave, okay? A delay is not a denial, okay? So be real clear, Amber, all right? Especially with you youngins, because you youngins got microwave popcorn, you got uh, instant rice in a bag, you got frozen turkey burgers. Y'all want everything like this. You know, I'm the kind, I, I had to wash rice and cook it in a pot and watch it, it don't, it don't burn. And, and, and I had to... I had to grind the meat so that I could make a turkey burger. And it wasn't turkey that we was making. So Amber, a delay is not a denial. Don't lose patience. 
do a daily spiritual practice every single day, Amber. And when you can't do it, start your day like we started this uh, spa. Breathe. All right. Here's another question from Leah Smith. Ain't no men out there. How come all the ladies is asking me questions? I want a man. I, I do want a man, but <laughs> I don't want him right now. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Miss V, how do I, 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 I'm Leah, I can't see my, your writing. The type is too small. Here we go. How do I continue to have faith courage when literally I'm falling apart mentally, physically, emotionally? I believe in God, but I also see my reality. Leah, you're not looking at reality, beloved. You're looking at illusion. You're looking at the matrix. The reality is in you. And instead of looking at it outside, Leah, begin within. Go within. You got to go in, baby. I, I don't know how old you are. I don't, I don't know where you are. But you got to go in. Because where the mind goes, the behind follows. So if you're falling apart physically, whether it's health or, or your home or whatever, it's in here, baby. If you're falling apart emotionally, it's in here. So I want you to get this right. If you get this right and you get your heart right, if you build up faith each and every day, I'm telling you, it's going to change and it's going to change quickly because we are in the 21st question, not the 21st question, the 21st century and stuff is happening like this. So Leah, uh, Leah, please, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Go get the app. Because you, you get a trial. You, you can get three principles a day. Work those principles. Listen to them every day. It sounds to me like maybe you don't have guidance in your life or you don't have anybody that you could look, look up to. Find you a wise woman in your church, in your community, in your neighborhood. Find you a wise woman. That means a woman 60 or older who's moving like you want her to move. If I could take you on, I would. I can't do private clients and do what I do. But Leah, you, you're not falling apart, baby. The mountain, it was assigned to you. The problem, it was assigned to you. The, the challenge, the issue, it was assigned to you, baby, so that you could build the faith in yourself required to be a demonstration to others of what's possible. It's you, you know? Leah, listen, listen to me. Every, if you're out there, a breakdown precedes a breakthrough. So you are heading towards something great. The only thing you got to do is shift the consciousness and the attitude. So here's what I want you to know. I don't know where you are in your spiritual life, in your spiritual world, but let me, let me put this to you this way, Leah. The creator, whether you call it God or Buddha, Allah, Jesus, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Just say creator, divine mind, is the alpha, meaning the beginning and the omega, meaning the end. The beginning and the end of your life is in the creator's hands. So Leah, he's got the middle cover. He's got your back, baby. Lean on him, lean on him, lean, lean, lean. Do your daily spiritual practice. Get the worksheet and do it. Go get the Awakenings app, beautyeverywhere.com. Go get the Awakenings app. Work with those principles every day. Find you a wise woman or another sister woman that you, that can help you. And be mindful of what you're telling yourself, okay? Thank you, Leah, for writing. Thank you for writing. We're running out of time. I want to get to as many questions as I can. All right, where where's the man? Okay, second page. Here we go. And that is Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Jonathan's 26. Jonathan, when I wrote this book, I'm going to show it to you. I want you to see this, Jonathan. <laughs> okay. When I wrote this book right here, you were one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love that you would come to me. I'll be your old auntie. No, I ain't old. I'll be your, I'll be your wise auntie. Here we go, Jonathan. I'm 26. My soul has opened up and I'm beginning my healing. My ego wants to fail and go back to old ways. Oh, Jonathan, that is a powerful awareness. Oh, wait, I just have to wipe my lips. 
Oh, he knows that the ego is not him and he's only 26 years old. That is a hallelujah moment right there. Okay. What practices can I use to keep my ego in check and not running my life? There's only one baby, prayer. Prayer. Mm -mm. I have a surrender prayer that I'm going to give as the bonus gift in a future spa. But right now, Jonathan, I want you to get yourself a copy of Get Over It, okay? And read that prayer of surrender until you know it by heart. That the only way to subdue the ego is with prayer. And listen, remember I said the only way to subdue a habit is with another habit? If you want to subdue a bad habit, you got to have a good habit to put in its place. Otherwise, you're going to lose faith that you keep giving in to the old habit yourself. Okay? So, Jonathan, prayer. Because the only way to subdue the darkness is to call in the light. Ha! Ah, come on. So, mm, wait a minute. I just shocked my own self. <laughs> That's what you got to do, Jonathan. Get your app. Go get the Awakenings app. I don't know where you are. I hope you're coming to see me. Go look at iamlavansantlive.com. And when you get there, say, I'm Jonathan. Jonathan's here. Okay. And Leah, if you're coming to see me, you do the same thing. Because I just want to hug you. All right. But Leah, I don't know where you are. Phoenix is May 29th. If you're not in Phoenix, you got 14 days to do the app and to do your journaling, to answer that question. And when I see you, I want you to tell me how much better things are. All right? Let me know that. All right. Okay, Jonathan, prayer. Go get you a copy of Get Over It or borrow your mom's or your sister's. Don't go to the store and liberate one because that's what the young people used to do when they was in college. Go steal my books. <laughs> the man told me that Acts of Faith was the most stolen property in the bookstore. All right? But I don't want you to do that. I want you to get a copy of Acts of Faith. Y'all like... um. The, what they call it, the devices. I think it is a Kindle e edition. Read the prayer of surrender, all right? Until you know it by heart. Let me get another question, all right? Here comes, let me just see. And let me say hi. Hi, change your smoke detector battery. Safety first. What is, who's smoke detector? Ain't no smoke. You see smoke? <laughs> uh -huh. My smoke detector battery uh, it does that. It does It does it for light, not for a smoke detector. I have to have lights all around because the people come and try to knock on my door. And when the deer go by, it sets the little thing off. So that's what it is. If you're talking about mine. All right. Jonathan Vargas. All right. Let me see. Monette Lightfoot. Hi, Monette. Thank you for answering, asking the question. And I got to do the summary. Oh, my God. We're running out of time. All right. And I want to do the summary and I want to give you all instructions. Monette is Lightfoot. How do I continue to keep faith and hope when everything you try, number one, own it. Don't, don't tell me you, tell me I, everything I try. Why do we lose faith in ourselves? Because we externalize everything. What are you supposed to do when people don't treat you right? No, 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 no. What am I supposed to do when I have the experience of people not treating me with decency, dignity, and honor? So the first thing you got to do, Monette, is own your stuff, all right? Your thoughts, your feelings. If you want to build a good relationship with yourself, you got to own your stuff. You can't put it out there. You, who you talk, who do you, you talking to? It ain't me, okay? How do I continue to keep faith and hope when everything I try to do, every step I try to make to get myself out of the situation I'm in, I keep getting knocked down every single time. It almost seems like God is ignoring my cries, my pain, my questions, my effort. Now see, Monet, that gives it a whole nother experience. When you start owning it, you got to own it because what that's going to do is it's going to trigger up the feelings. And then when you go down and you start writing, who am I and what do I want? Let me just say this. The finger of God never points where the hand of God won't make a way. The finger of God never points where the hand of God won't make a way. So if you're getting beat down, knocked down, you made that up. You may not be on purpose. You may not be in alignment with the universal will for you, or you may be approaching it wrong. First of all, when was the first time you got knocked down? And what was the lesson you got from that? And are you applying that lesson to every other situation? When was the first time 
you you cried out? And are you angry that you don't think your your cry was answered? I'm telling you, that mountain was a sign to you, Monet. It was a sign to you. Uh huh. Just because you don't like the way things happen doesn't make them wrong. Sometimes things happen that way to teach you what you needed to learn. Like I said to y'all, I had to learn to get off the Save the Universe committee and get ready to be in my joy. If something good is happening for me and my son, my grandson, my, my granddaughter, they having some issue, I'm not going to stop my life and go do that. And we've been taught that selfish. I say it's selfful. So, Monet, you really must ask for what you really want. And you've got to go back and look. you got to go back and look at what you learned from what you didn't get. Okay. Not with anger and resentment and judgment, but in a way that you can use it. All right. Go get the awakenings app. Go get the, and go get you a copy of get over it. Cause you got some anger in there. All right. And Renee own your stuff, own your stuff. Opportunities, um, come so that you can practice faith. Some of us have flaccid faith muscles, <laughs> you know, ask for faith. You don't get it unless you demonstrate it. Faith can't pour down into you. You demonstrate it. Remember faith without works is nothing. All right. So you've got to have challenges, build your faith muscles. That's why we're doing this. Some of us have real flabby faith muscles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we want everything given to us and particularly some of your youngins, you want everything to come to you easy. Not going to happen. All right, here we go. Wow. So since we're running out of time, let me give a, a quick review of things that destroy our faith in ourselves, fear, doubt, and worry. Okay. Fear, doubt, and worry. So you've got to stop and ask yourself, okay, what am I afraid of? What am I uh, doubting? Is it me? Is it God? Is it life? Is it other people? What am I worrying about? All right? Those three things will undermine your faith. And if those three things are present, you don't have faith. All right? All right. The other thing that undermines our faith is the need to be right. That we want to be right about what we're thinking, saying, and doing. And we will just put ourselves in all manner of crazy situations just to be right. All right. Seeking control, trying to control things and people and circumstances and situations says you may not feel safe inside, says also that you don't have faith because when you have faith, you learn to go with the flow. And when you're in the flow of things, you just move and doing what you can do the way you know how you can do it. When you do that, things unfold and they happen for you, through you. You don't have to be in control, all right? If you add these things to, these three things, fear, doubt, and worry, to the need to be right and the need to be in control, then you pile on top of that bad habits and bad behavior. If I were faith, I wouldn't want to be with you either. <laughs> Listen, you must choose not to think, not to worry, not to doubt, not to obsess. You have to choose you must choose to breathe and flow, knowing that everything is unfolding just as it needs to. There simply isn't enough room in your mind to keep worry and doubt and fear and faith active. So you've got to choose what you're given tenancy to. Who's the tenant in your mind? Is it going to be faith or is it? going to be that other stuff. All right. So here are the three main reasons we lose faith in ourselves. We don't have a good solid relationship with ourselves. We doubt ourselves. We've lost confidence in ourselves. We don't understand the truth of who we are. We get confused and conflomerated <laughs> because we've been through some stuff that we didn't know was assigned to us so that we could build our faith. We lose faith that way. So here's the spa treatment. If you've lost faith, get clear about who you are and get clear about what you want. Get yourself a journal and ask that question, who am I? Write your responses down. Don't type them, write them down and allow them to unfold through you. The first couple of days you'll be thinking, the second couple of days you'll be feeling and then you'll be in the flow and it'll start to come forward. 
The second reason we lose faith is because we're not clear about what we really want. So spend some time doing things and being with things that you really want and eliminate the time that you spend being with people who are not in alignment with your, the desires of your heart. One of the things we do is that we carry the weight of the things that we don't want and then we can't wait for the things that we do want. Patience is a precursor to faith. So what's the spa treatment? Get clear about what you want. How? <laughs> I'm going here again. Target. I got this at Target. Get yourself a journal and write down what you want. Write it down over and over and over and over. Write down the five, six, seven, 10, 25 things that you want and keep writing it over and over and over until the same things keep coming up. Because what you're going to discover is the more you write, things are going to fall off, more things are going to come in. And then you know how to get busy moving in the right direction. And finally, this one is hard. This is hard. So clutch your points. If we lose faith in our creator, in God, in the Lord of our life, in the sovereignty of the creator of life, when we lose faith in, in that, we depend too heavily on our human self, and we diminish the value of our divine identity, the presence of God within us. And if you don't have a solid understanding of the creator of your life and the presence of that in you, you will eventually have broken, faithless relationship with God and the process of life. So what's the spa treatment? Begin within. Get still, reflect, inquire, learn to lean on that which is bigger and greater and wiser than you. Meditate, pray, have a daily spiritual practice that will cut out the external noise and center you on the holy place within you, the place of life, light, love, and truth that will give birth to everything you desire. Begin with that, yeah? Okay. That's our faith spa treatment for tonight. And I, I hope that you heard something that you can use that'll help you build your faith muscle. Now, our spa treatment next week, right here next week, is going to be May, Tuesday, May 21st at 7.30. And we're going to talk about our relationships with others. So I'll take some of those questions that I didn't get to tonight. I'll answer those questions. So don't forget to sign up, sign up so that you can get a spot in next week's, um, next week's session. And here's what you got to do. In the meantime, I want to tell you about the bonus worksheet. I have a bonus worksheet for you tonight. Next week, I'm going to have a meditation for you. But tonight, I want you to write, okay? Tomorrow morning, if you've signed up for this session, tomorrow morning, you're going to get an email. And there'll be the link to replay this so you can go back and take notes. Because I know we've covered a lot. And you want to get all of those little nuggets, right? You can replay this session. And there'll also be a link that you can sign up and go download the spa worksheet. All right. And if you sign up for my mailing list, you're going to notice about future spas. Now, um, if you need your ticket for the Acts of Faith uh, remix tour, don't forget to go to yamlavanzantlive.com and you can get your ticket. Yeah, you can do that. Go on to 30 cities. The cities are there. Uh, when you go to yamlavanzantlive.com. Now, if you didn't get your tickets yet, don't worry. Don't worry. You've got a little bit of time. Phoenix, you don't have no time. Okay, because the best seats are really, really going. All right, so now you know. I want to leave you with the final spa treatment. And if for um, some strange and bizarre reason you don't want to come out and see me, <laughs> you can uh, answer the, you can still watch the replay here. So <clears throat> if you want to know the end, look at the beginning. Right now, just allow yourself to become aware of your breathing. Allow yourself to be present to your inhale and your exhale. Just as if you were relaxing on a massage table. Just relax. Remain mindful and connected to your breath. 
and just relax. Instruct your body to relax. Relax your shoulders. Relax your hips. Relax your legs. And here's a secret. Relax your tongue in your mouth. If you're hunched over the keyboard, sit back. Just relax. If your mind is racing, tell it to relax. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe slowly. Be present to your breath and just relax. You've just had a spa treatment, so just inhale and exhale. Now just listen. Acts of Faith, February 9th. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, Fannie Lou Hamer. Many of us believe that unless we're struggling, we are not doing it right. We struggle with thoughts, feelings, even other people. We struggle with money problems, family problems, and personal problems. Many of us have said, I am tired of struggling. Well, guess what? When you make the decision to stop struggling, you stop. When you stop struggling, things will get better. Struggle goes against the flow. It creates exhaustion in the mind and body. And when you're exhausted, you get sick. If you are sick, you must make a decision and a commitment to do everything in your power to get better. The power is in the commitment never to do again what makes you sick. The key is in the decision never to tire of doing what is good, best, and right for you. Now, let me see what our reflection is on that. On February 9th, the reflection, that's your assignment, is what are you sick and tired of? <laughs> what are you willing to stop wrestling with today? That's our spiritual spa. I thank you for coming. Remember, you'll get an email in the morning with the link for the replay. Go get your tickets at iamlevanzantlive.com. And just in case nobody's told you that they love you today, let me be the first to say, I love you. I don't want nothing from you. And there's absolutely nothing you need to do. You don't even need to love me back. I'm going to love you anyhow. Mm. Bye.